Hello everyone, this is GGN. This is part four for this news report today for Tuesday, November 27th, 2012. My website is ggnonline.com if you'd like to visit and support us, or support me, it's a one-man show here. And um, on YouTube, my channels are ddarko2012 and my backup channel is ddarko2013. So, we left off here, and I'm sorry if I'm going slower here, but I do have a lot of news, and um, I just wanted to make sure that I showed um, not just the, the stuff that's actually what I think is true or accurate as far as news goes, but then also the propaganda disinformation. It's, I mean, it's interesting, you know what I mean? It's, uh, they call it, you know, InfoWars is a, it's a war on for your mind, you know, information war. It is an information war, and you're being bombarded. Um, the problem is, is that you don't want to get caught up uh, thinking that uh, you're in the alternative news and, and blah, 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 and, and, uh, and you end up, uh, you know, the war on for your mind, and you're losing, right, to the disinformation. So um, hopefully you can make up your own mind. I give my own opinions, uh, but those are my opinions. Usually you'll know when they're my opinions. So I won't say it, but uh, you can tell. So I've mentioned before about how, um, you know, I actually questioned, you know, is Obama the real deal? Does he really not like Israel? Or is this a big show? Because remember, Israel has to be off on their own now. They have to cut the umbilical cord from the United States. So this could be a big, just a big, uh, a big show. It says, uh, even during Israel's most egregious crimes, Obama's support is steadfast. Obama enthusiastically supported uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's decision to escalate the recent war on Gaza using the uh, tumult to mend a reportedly soured personal relationship despite Israeli actions of uh, aggression. So there you go. Their, uh, their attacks brought Netanyahu and Obama closer. Clinton warns Netanyahu not to punish Palestinian authority for UN bid. The U.S. message to Israel was to not take any irreversible actions and to act wisely the day after the UN vote. Clinton emphasized that steps such as annulling the Oslo Accords could bring about dangerous consequences, kind of like attacking Iran. So they say the same rhetoric, right? They don't want to nuclear Iran, Iran but they don't want to attack them because it'll, it'll set fire to the region. So Clinton kind of sa says uh, basically what uh, Brzezinski was saying in regards to Iran and stuff like that and, and, and being Israel's lapdog. Which is what, uh, you know, that's okay, you know, we may not necessarily be for the Palestinian statehood, but we're not going to, uh, we're not going to do anything uh, uh, to support stopping that. That's basically what she says. Uh, then you have this from Israeli website, U.S. at odds with France over Palestinian bid. The State Department says U.S. obviously disagrees with France's decision to back Palestinian pursuit of upgraded U.N. status, which Washington regards as a mistake. So... Uh, it is pretty interesting um, that France is um, supporting this, so it makes me wonder, you know, while at the same time they're all about uh, uh, taking down, like, Libya and Syria and stuff like that. Then you have this, um, <clears throat> this Likud primary shows dramatic rightward shift in Israel's ruling party. The moderate longtime members ousted in favor of hawks. So after the primary, or after a primary that was marred by technical problems over the weekend, Israel's ruling Likud party, sorry if I butcher that word, has issued unofficial results showing a surprisingly extreme shift in sentiments where three current cabinet members find themselves on the outside looking in. So, in their places of the people that lost, the primary voters who support towards Likud's party most extremist members with uh, Moshe Feiglin, who praised Adolf Hitler for his exem exemplary regime and has called for the expulsion of not only Palestinians but Israeli Arabs from the nation. The big question is whether there is enough appetite among left and moderate voters left to change the result or if Lukud's primary is just reflecting Israel's current political reality. And just something I mentioned earlier, Palestine's uh, UN vote expected on Thursday and Hamas endorses plan. So. A vote expects to win overwhelming support for gen General Assembly, uh, followed by what? The top item on the U.S.-Israel agenda is Palestinian statehood bid from November 8th. This is from the Global News Service of the Jewish People. The Palestinians' bid for an upgrade of the U.N. status is an immediate concern of the U.S.-Israeli relationship, Israeli U.S. Ambassador Michael Oren said in a post-U.S. election interview. 
So with regard with the utmost seriousness and are closely communicating with the U.S. and other like-minded nations in the world. So we know about France, then British conditions set before Palestinians are nothing but conspiracy. They say the U.K. government's conditions set before the Palestinian Authority uh, in his bid for the U.N. recognition are nothing more than a conspiracy to ditch the bid altogether. Britain wants Palestinians uh, to not have the ability to pursue the Israeli regime's authorities for war crimes at international bodies such as the ICC. So says that this is a complete hypocrisy in, it, in itself, and secondly, it gives the Israelis a free reign to commit war crimes as before and to the extent they desire. Next up, and Harper of Canada took steps to stifle Palestinian statehood bid, they say. They said him and his government have intervened to pressure the Palestinian Authority to drop its bid for upgraded status at the UN. And remember, Canadian Premier Harper skipped the UN General Assembly to get uh, a Jewish award back in September. Along the similar news, Hungarian rightists list Jews who pose security risks. This uh, Martin Going Goisi of the Zsabek party calls for listing of Jews who are a threat to the country, says Jewish groups reminiscent of the Nazi policy. Jewish organizations uh, reacted furiously on Tuesday to the suggestion by the far-right Hungarian political leader, Martin, blah, 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 that the government draw up a list of Jews. Um, and see, here we go. Kind of, This is really annoying when they do that. I tell you, Jerusalem Post is the worst with advertisements and pop-ups. I do have pop-up ad blocker. It says that the, um, the leader says that the government draw up a list of Jews living in Hungary uh, who pose a national security threat. Goes on to think such a conflict makes it timely to tally up the people of Jewish ancestry who live here, especially in the Hungarian parliament and Hungarian government, who indeed pose a national security risk to Hungary. It's kind of similar to what uh, Russia is doing. Of course, it's not specific like that. They just say uh, uh, foreign agents. But really what they're referring to is U.S. aid and stuff like that that are trying to uh, 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 basically meddle foreign countries and entities meddle in their internal affairs. Norway police apologize for deportation of Jews in World War II. So again, here we go with these Scandinavian countries um, apologizing in that. Uh, Norwegian police have issued an official apology over involvement in the arrest and deportation of hundreds of Jewish residents during World War II. On November 6, uh, Haney Herlin, a famous Norwegian historian of religion, accused Norway of being the most anti-Semitic country in the West. Uh, he also said that the degree of anti-Israelism in uh, Norway today, on the state level, in the media, in the trade unions, in the schools, is unprecedented in modern Norwegian history. Remember, if you're anti-Israel, you're anti-Semitic. You're anti-Jewish, you're a racist. So that's why they're trying to make laws for it in California. They already have it in Europe that uh, you can't say anything about that, about Israel, because you'd be considered anti-Semitic. Hate speech. Now, one comment said the Norwegian government should have apologized to these people for allowing them to come back. Now they'll have to cope with mass immigration and genderless schools. See, that's something that's being pushed in Sweden and the Scandinavian countries, uh, bringing down uh, the male and uh, boosting up the female and false feminism. But uh, also, the Zionists like to use, because they're a minority, uh, mass immigration. They like to flood in whatever country they want to dominate uh, politically and financially. Uh, then they can do it socially uh, through mass immigration, which they're doing in Europe, uh, you know, especially like uh, in Germany and Scandinavian countries, but also in the United States. And that's why in Japan they don't want to have anything to do with that. Because they know it's the preservation of their people and their culture. Obama seeks to legalize assassination drone attacks, says report. The regime of the president, Barack Obama, is trying to legalize its assassination drone attacks in uh, six Muslim countries as the targeted killing program draws global uh, condemnations. The explicit rules would give the U.S. regime clear standards and procedures to continue its targeted killing program. They're drawing up a formal rule book to justify these targeted killings in Pakistan, Afghanistan, Yemen, Somalia, Iraq, and Libya. The report added that the government had accelerated the plan in the weeks prior uh, to the presidential election, as the likelihood of Obama's re-election was deemed low, which is a good indicator that it was, a, you know, it was fixed. So, so it does make you wonder, um, you know. Uh, what's going on here? Uh, who's he represent? It says that uh, the new president, they did this, uh, building up to the elections, so the new president would inherit clear standards and procedures, according to two uh, regime officials. So was he trying to do some good or bad? I don't know. 
no country on earth would tolerate missiles. I don't know, because, you know, it's like, what, um, it says under President Obama, more than 300 drone strikes have occurred. I mean, yeah, thousands of people have been drone striked under Obama, so I don't, I don't know how good of a person he can really be. No country on earth would tolerate missiles raining down on citizens from outside its borders, says man who regularly bombs Pakistan and Yemen. So he's speaking in Thailand and on Sunday. Um, President Obama defended Israel's counter-assault on Hamas by saying there's no country on earth that would tolerate missiles raining down on citizens from outside its borders. So, pretty interesting, isn't it? Yeah, that is a very interesting thing to say at a time when the U.S. is regularly raining missiles down on Pakistan and Yemen. Next up, police chiefs adopt drone code of conduct. I've already covered this before. Uh, I'm looking for the date here, Thursday, October 16th. So the police adopt their own little code, too. Autonomous killer robots, more ethical than human soldiers. So it's all about the ethics, right? Drones could soon operate without the help of humans. They're reporting that the Pentagon wants his drones to be more autonomous so they can run with little assistance from people, so they don't have to take responsibility. Before they were blind, deaf, and dumb, they said now we're beginning to make them see, hear, and sense. So this professor says, it's not my belief that an unmanned system will be perfectly ethical in the battlefield, but I'm convinced that they are, can be performed more ethically than human soldiers are capable of. So, the United Nations wants to use drones in the Congo conflict for the first time ever to monitor fighting in the Eastern uh, Republic of Congo, where Rwanda has been accused of aiding the rebels. So, but uh, like I said, they don't give a shit about humanitarianism. By resources, risk of robot uprising wiping out human race to be studied from the 26. Cambridge researchers are uh, researching how to assess whether technology could end up destroying human civilization. The dangers posed by biotechnology, artificial life, ooh, nanotechnology like the particles in the chemtrails, aerosols, and climate change, which is actually the result of uh, weather modification, i.e., chemtrails. So. Fears that machines may take over have been central to the plot of some of the most popular science fiction films. Perhaps the most famous is Skynet, a rogue computer system depicted in the Terminator film. Some people think uh, DARPA is part of that as well. The Skynet game self-awareness and fought back after first being developed by the U.S. military. Next up, uh, why the future doesn't need us. This is actually from back in 99, 2000. Our most powerful 21st century technologies, robotics, genetic engineering, and nanotechnology are threatening to make humans an endangered species. So this is just another source um, before we are talking about the Cambridge. But the guy, it's pretty creepy how he puts it. He says that at some point in the century, we'll have to be facing one of the major shifts in human history uh, when intelligence escapes the constraints of biology. So they're talking about transhumanism and all sorts of stuff, singularity of artificial intelligence and it's basically do you want to do you want to exterminate your people you're you want to exterminate the human race well i think people will be all on board with that i mean they're all for killing their own race and their own people so yeah they want to go ahead and kill humans too go ahead navy uh, virtual health care set to expand major switch in philosophy could change the way local military members and their families receive their eugenics so uh, rise in because of the economy, sluggish economy, rising medical costs, that's the same reason for using drones to kill people, and shrinking budgets because the bankers robbed you. Ah, the only time you'll have to go see a doctor is when you're basically dying. <laughs> kind of like this from last October, robotic medication delivery enhances death care. Yeah, so when, when the robots uh, deliver the medication and it kills you, oh, who's responsible? Not a person. It can't be a robot. They don't have a soul, right? Toyota debuts or debuts robot nurses to aid the disabled. So yeah, remember they got robot nurses now aiding the, the people who uh, have been victims of eugenics. This is universal too. In the UK, end of doctor's surgery, uh, GP visits to be replaced by Skype consultations in a bid to save cash. Part of uh, false feminism is few females are willing to step forward for this uh, infantry in the Marine Corps. So, so far only two of the 80 eligible female Marines have volunteered for the course. But the ACLU must have not gotten the memo because they're saying they're going to sue over the policy barring women from combat. What I said about the minority groups exploiting uh, other minority groups that are being oppressed in order for what? Political control and social engineering. Meanwhile, an army mom is saying that the military suicides is getting out of control.
Wow, so this is coming from the Army Times. They say he was, the mom says, he wasn't a casualty of war. He was a casualty of his own mind. And as the UN seeks to control the internet, SWAT teams raid a 10-year-old girl's laptop in Finland. And watch out for the Wi-Fi police hunting you down. Thank you.